Hey y'all, I'm Sam and I'm a chemistry tutor here on Wiseam. Right now we're supposed to determine the pH of a 0.1 molarity solution, HC3H5O2, with a Ka value of 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. We're supposed to shoo, show our ice table and Ka expression. Cool. So I know that this is an acid. I looked it up, it's called propanoic acid, by the way, but you don't need to know that. And it has this value. And if it's a Ka value, it means it's describing this reaction, which is the dissociation of an acid in water. So we have our full kind of acid species in water. It breaks up into a proton and its conjugate base. And then we can realize, oh yeah, this connects to our idea of what Ka is. So first of all, they gave us a value and it's below 10 to the negative third, which is usually our threshold for calling it a weak acid. But on top of that, we know that equilibrium constants are always our aqueous and or gaseous species participating with products raised to their coefficients on top and reactants raised to their uh, coefficients in the denominator. So we have our proton in the numerator to the first, conjugate base to the first over our reactant to the first. So if this is a small value like 10 to the negative fifth, it must mean that these values up top are really small relative to the numbers in the bottom, which means that very little of the products are being formed relative to the amount that we have initially, which means it's a weak acid. It's not dissociating very well in water. Cool. From there, we can maybe start setting up our ice table. And some students I've heard actually call it a rice table because they say reaction and then ICE, initial change equilibrium. The initial was given to be 0.1 molarity and I kept the zeros to preserve our sig figs. Of course, we can assume that there's next to no protons floating around. I mean, there are some in water, but negligible, and none of our conjugate base. Change is actually pretty simple in this one. Of course, you can't take away from the right side. So that's a pretty big hint as to why we'd have to take X away from the left. And then of course we're forming some protons and some of this conjugate base in the process. So plus X and plus X. If either of these had had a coefficient, you would have needed to reflect that in the plus X down here. So for example, maybe if there were two here, it'd be plus two X. So just be really careful about that. And finally, we can combine them into our equilibrium concentrations. 0.1 molarity minus X, plus X and plus X. And I left off the molarities because I'm sure we'll remember that throughout. We're gonna take this and plug these values into our Ka and it'll look something like this x times x and then 0.1 minus for most of these problems especially with weak acids with super small dissociation constants we can keep our x's in the numerator but say barely any of our reactant got used up to produce those products remember it's a very weak acid and it doesn't dissociate very much so let's go ahead and cancel that minus x just to make our life a lot simpler uh, algebra wise so we don't have to do like the quadratic formula or anything like that nice so then i'll bring it down and I did some algebra here, but I hope you can see what I did. I used our Ka value. I moved the 0.1 from the denominator to the left side of the equation. And that left me with x squared, so I square rooted both sides. And when I solve for it, I got that x is 0 0.00114 molarity. And you always need to check what x actually was supposed to represent. But in this case, it did represent the concentration of protons and also the concentration of conjugate base, because that's what we said x was here. We're not done, we're really close, but we're supposed to find pH or power of hydrogen. This is an equation that they give you on your equation sheet on the AP exam, but I encourage most students to uh, memorize it if they can. It's just that pH is the negative log of the concentration of H+. And my answer here was 2.94 with three sig figs. To preserve this three sig figs that they gave us here, I know that Ka looks like it has two, but this is usually just a given value. So we can probably assume that they had a lot more accuracy than we can have in our little laboratory experiment where we only have three. So that's why I use three at the end. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much.